and uh, sometimes they say that the aspect and placement of retrograde planets are very strong so for example they say if saturn is afflicting a planet but if it is retrograde and then it is afflicting then the intensity is much more and severe so what is your opinion on that i i i have an experience that i know that in the texts in the ancient texts it says that the slower the planet is moving the stronger it is oh okay now i do not take that i have not seen that to be the case with the manifest power of the planet no it's more passive however however a retrograde planet is closer to the earth and so that planetary energy on a psychological level is way more powerful so if venus is retrograde the houses that venus rules will be passive but the person throughout their entire life they'll always be thinking about love matters how marriage should be the arts they'll always be processing everything through through venus okay if jupiter is retrograde the person goes through life everything is philosophical everything is what does this really mean what's the where is god where is nature like that so the retrograde becomes uh more powerful on a psychological basis but not the physical a person with with a a retrograde mars is often not very sexual or physical even though that's supposed to be more powerful it's not but they may be very in their mind they may be very oriented toward being stubborn wanting to do things their own way trying to figure out you know trying to filter everything through should i be aggressive and pushy or you know like like it's more psychological that's what i find to me yeah. the aspects to me the aspects become more powerful when they aspect their exaltation sign when they aspect to a to the degree of another planet things like that okay and another know, thing yeah. there's a lot of different opinions that's just how i experience it yeah i mean everybody will have their own opinion or as per the experience and you know you know why <laughs> they say there was a curse by shiva oh the the uh somewhere in the puranas shiva had the astrologers doing something and the astrologers tried to manipulate things and shiva got angry and said i'm putting a curse on you from now on astrologers will never agree anyway oh. what were you gonna, what were you going to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was uh, about to ask you that um, like in some traditions like nadi as far as my knowledge they do not take sun as a malefic and in most of the traditions they take but in general like you were speaking about saturn and you said rahu is very good in the 10th house and mars is yeah. also very good the thing about the sun is that it's like the moon the sun is the atmakarika it's the indicator of the soul so in the books you know i'm 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 working on getting my books into ebooks now and i'm going to be changing i'm going to be editing my my ancient hindu astrology for the modern western astrologer for the planets in the houses i'm going to be changing them a lot because if you read the traditional books sun in the first house is bad sun in the second house is bad for money sun in the third house is bad for art but they mean that in the sense that it's a malefic but when you look at a horoscope and person says what should i do for a living what should i do with my life you absolutely have to look at the sun where is the moon the moon's your emotions and feelings where's the sun the sun is your soul so in that sense it's a great benefic you, you know you, you know what i mean yeah. but 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 if a planet comes within 2 or 3 degrees of the sun it will be burned there's no question it's a hot star it's not venus and jupiter it's a hot star but but people if you think of it only as malefic that's going to go wrong if the sun you know if you're looking at a horoscope and it's good for art and then the sun is in the other house of art the 5th house that's corroborating if if mercury is in the 10th house and you're thinking a writer an educator and the sun is in the 2nd house 
that's going to corroborate the education and the knowledge. If the sixth ruler is in the tenth and you're thinking healing for a career, and then the sun is in the sixth house, that's healing because the, the sun is the soul. But make no mistake, it's a hot star. But that's interesting. Who is it that said that it's a benefic? What what, what system? No, I, I've heard, I mean, not exactly benefic. I've heard some Nadi astrologers, they say sun is not exactly a malefic. It may not be necessarily a benefic, but it is definitely not a oh, malefic. They are, they are correct 100%. Yes. You cannot, you cannot, when you see the sun in a house, yeah. the person's going to play out a lot of karma in that realm. They have to. Okay. For sure. And another question I wanted to ask you, like for moon, as you said, like many times they say a oh, moon is the indicator of fame, but I always have had this question and said, but, but moon is a very internal planet. So how does the moon it, moon itself is not, the moon itself is not fame, but look, if the moon is very bright, just yes. very bright, then you have to think more abundance, more luxury, more charisma, just in general. It's so important. The moon is so important. It's like another ascendant. Oh, okay. but, but, but calling it fame makes no sense to me at all. Of course, if the moon is in the 10th house, yes, that can be fame. But I mean, I can see what they mean. Look, when I start a horoscope, I tell them the most important influences are the first house and the moon. Okay. Nothing could be more important than the first house and the moon. They both represent you. So, but it's not exactly fame, but, but it, it's, if a person has a dim moon, there's no abundance, there's no charisma. Now, you have to be careful with that because the moon could be completely new. It could be a new moon. The moon is conjunct the sun, has no strength, right? But let's say that the moon is aspected by Jupiter and Venus very tightly. The moon is very strong. I don't care about the brightness. If the moon is tightly aspected by a benefic, then I don't care. Okay. It's, it's a good moon. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing uh, I've heard that they say in some traditions that moon Venus conjunction is one of the Raj Yogas by default. And some traditions say that it's terrible for affairs because the person is always in that mood of romance and neediness. And when that is not fulfilled, then the person his mind goes haywire and he starts looking it elsewhere. So what is your opinion on this? If you see moon Venus together or aspecting each other? If I see moon Venus in America, I love it. If I see moon Venus for an Indian, I think it's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, that's the truth. I was doing when I was with my second mentor, Padia, we were looking at a horoscope of an ex-girlfriend of mine. And he said, she had moon in an angle from Venus. You could okay. have a conjunction or an angle mm -hmm. or an opposition. Angle means ke kendras. Yeah, kendras or opposite or yes. conjunction. Yes. He said to me, if you sleep with this woman, she will come back for more and more. <laughs> oh. And the truth was, this woman was the most passionate, the most sexual of all the, the women I had ever met, she was, sex was very big for her. Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe had Moon Venus, John Kennedy, Moon Venus, Hugh Hefner, who has the Playboy magazine, Moon Venus conjunct. So it, the Moon Venus conjunct, I love the Moon with Venus and the Moon with Jupiter for happiness. I love it in a conjunction. But as far as the, the, the life is going to be very, very sexual. It's going to be very passionate, very sexual. So that's, a, that's more of a value judgment as to whether you like that or not. But a person who has moon conjunct Venus, they're charmed. They have a lot of charm and happiness. So I like that. Um, the, uh, like if, if you take Venus in the seventh house, I don't like Venus in the seventh house very much. Okay, why is it? Because because the Venus in the seventh house, Venus in the seventh house that, that I have seen over the years, the person gets the most beautiful partner, the most romantic partner. 
but those relationships they don't stop they just oh. the the person with venus in the seventh they have too many affairs uh it, it's it's too much it's too much venus energy so that so that instead of having a marriage that is happy and smooth the person has venus in the seventh all of life becomes about that marriage oh it becomes too much and then they may have affairs it's i, I i'm not a i'm not such a fan of venus in the seventh house okay so you are saying for not marrying and keeping enjoying that can be very good but for sustained marriage that is not good even moon venus you are saying the moon venus can be okay for a marriage depending upon if the seventh house is okay okay then anywhere I like, then i like the moon venus if the seventh house isn't indicating anything crazy then i like the moon venus for marriage is fine um but like i say i see too many cases where venus in the seventh is, is too much is too much energy for marriage so that they they can't simply have one marriage and be happy with it because all okay. of life is chasing this great dream of 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 passion in the marriage is too much the partners are gorgeous but but by the time they're done they've got two or three marriages or whatever so ge generally of course you can't say anything absolutely but i like venus uh, to be around someone with venus moon venus jupiter moon jupiter moon venus to be around them is very nice and they have a very nice charm and happiness like that and have you seen like you said that uh, if venus is in the 7th then it becomes that chase for that thing so have you seen if venus is in any other house then also this happens that suppose venus is in 10th then it becomes like a chase for a fantastic career or something like this yeah but that's not a i don't see that as a problem um you see it depends on how you look at it again so if a person's chasing a career mm -hmm. they can chase the career and they can change the career throughout life and that's fine but if a person has 2 3 4 marriages it creates a lot of you know <laughs> does somebody want you know if you ask somebody at the age of 20 would you like to have one stable marriage or you want to have four or five that are really great and really filled with excitement most are going to say give me one yes you know? there's a funny thing with um there's an aspect if you use uranus neptune and pluto okay Pluto is a planet that makes another planet compulsive. Okay. okay. If Pluto is with Mercury, the person's ability with with thinking and writing and the mind and communications is very powerful. I don't mind that. I see people with Pluto Mercury, their their intellect is strong, their communications are strong. It's great. If Pluto is with the sun, they can have a lot of power. spiritual power uh physical power strength of character pluto with jupiter they can have very intense religious philosophical interests but when you find a person with pluto conjunct venus oh it's a huge problem and when i first saw this i said why is this such a problem pluto should make pluto with venus should make them a great artist which it does which it does okay. but their love experiences are terrible mm. i don't mean that they're just fighting and friction i don't mean that i mean that they have these very intense dramatic compulsive relationships they start suddenly and they end suddenly and when they end it's like the person feels like they died Oh. And so I started to think why is Pluto with Venus so difficult? And I came to realize Venus is a superficial planet. Okay. Venus I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that if you take Venus and you intensify it too much it's no good. It's good for the arts. It's good for math to intensify it. But if you intensify Venus with a Pluto aspect the love matters go haywire. Mm. 
There's too much. Like that. And what you'll also find with Pluto Venus is that the person, when they, when they experience pain, the pain is so extreme that, that they experience so much pain that they then decide, I'm never going to go through that again. So what they do is they start trying to control people, control their experience, control life. So if you meet people with a close Venus Pluto aspect, if you see them when they're 35 years old, they look like they're 50 oh. oftentimes because they're spending so much time trying to control things because they don't want to experience pain. Their pain is experienced three or four times to the extent of you and I. They don't want that pain. So they start controlling life. If you try to control life, you're going to age quickly. It's an interesting aspect, but, but it made me realize Venus is a lighthearted planet. It shouldn't become too intense. And that's what happens when Venus is in the seventh house. It becomes too big of an influence to have a stable marriage. Generally, okay? Generally. I would much rather have Jupiter in the seventh house. Doesn't cause those problems. Jupiter in the seventh house, the person gets the partner they want. If they... They said, oh, I want that person as a partner. They get it. They, they can make it happen. It's very nice. Very nice aspect. And what is your opinion on Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto? Many people ask this question. What? Uranus, Neptune, and... What are they? Yeah, I mean, what's your opinion? Yeah. In your experience, how you have seen them working? 